Hey everybody and welcome to the first video in our DAS Studio series. And by I say our, I mean yours and mine. So let's get on with it. So this video series, we're going to go from the really, really, really basic stuff all the way to more advanced things. Um, I am certainly no expert in DAS Studio, so there are going to be things that I don't necessarily go over. I'm really just going to go through my own workflow and the techniques that I use to achieve certain things in my renders and I'll just hopefully give you the option of creating better images. Um, primarily this, this series is motivated by a, my patrons who want to see me talk about DAS Studio, but also when I play other people's games, um, a lot of the time there's half-baked renders or really bad lighting or even really bad composition going on and these are all really fundamental parts of creating good imagery for games um, as a professional photographer myself things like composition and lighting tend to come a bit more naturally to me but hopefully i'm going to pass some of that on to you um, however i will apologize in advance if i do skip over something because of my background um, things like exposure settings and things might come a bit more naturally to me so i might accidentally jump to something but i'm going to try and talk you through them piece by piece step by step so the first thing you want to do is load up DAS Studio after you've downloaded it. Uh, make sure that you've got um, this screen in front of you. Now your screen may not look exactly like mine. You can customize the screen by dragging the tabs to other sides of the screen around the top and all sorts. So you can pretty much put things wherever you want them to. But um, this is how I choose to have my screen. And then I, if I want to see the full image preview, I can click on the tabs there and it will go away. So as you can see on the left hand side we've got our scene, save, load, so on and so forth options and we've got all of these tools up here, the toolbar is here and then we've got our scripts down the side here like so. So the first thing that we're going to do in DAS Studio is we're going to look at the most most basic kind of principles and that is putting something in our scene using the custom or the standard HDRI that comes in DAS Studio as standard and then putting a camera on and applying some depth of field to it. So the first thing we want to do is use the primitives tool. So we're going to click up here and you can see that this shape that looks like three shapes squished together where it says create new primitive, we're going to click on that and then we're going to make sure the sphere is selected in our type. We're going to leave everything else the same. We're going to check that our diameter is 1.5 meters so that it's reasonably big in the screen and we're just going to hit accept. And as you can see, pretty quickly assuming that we've got this option set to nvidia iray this is what we're going to have so this is how we choose our viewport rendering mode so if i were to go to cartoon shaded you can see it's just going to show me the colors we can go to uh, wire texture shaded that shows us the wireframe um, so the two options that i generally use most of the time is texture shaded like so and the NVIDIA iRay if I want to check that my lighting looks how I imagine it's going to look like so. Now DAS Studio has a standard HDRI map set in um, so it will automatically render the image like so. So that's pretty good. Happy days. We're all happy with that. We can rotate around it and you can see that the shadows and the highlights are all in the right places. Everything makes sense. Lovely job. So HDRI, for those of you who don't know, oops, we can click on our screen here to get us back to, oh God, what's going on? It's all gone mad. There we go. If, uh, yeah, so if we, HDRI is a map, it's a, it's a 360 image essentially that instead of just having a picture on it, has light detail, has emissive properties. So for example you know you've seen the uh, hdr images where everything looks like it's squashed together an hdri image is a 360 image that uses multiple exposures to provide you with luminosity information so if you were to take a 360 image outside in the park then obviously the sun would have a incredibly high luminosity value whereas the shadow behind you would have a very very low luminosity value and that's what an hdri is so that's why we can see light here and we can actually see that if we go into our environment settings in our render settings click on environment and you can see here if i click on 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 the draw dome set 
setting. Now if I turn around you can see that there's a sun over there, it's incredibly bright and that's what's creating the light on this side of the image whereas the rest of the image has some luminosity but not as much. And I'm going to turn that dome back off like so. So what we've got now is we've got the shape so we're now going to add a camera and we can do that by selecting the camera icon on the add items bar like so and we've got this menu that comes up I'm going to put the camera where the imaginary camera that we're currently viewing the scene through is so we we'll click on apply active viewport transport transforms and we'll click on accept so what that done now is created a camera where we are so as you can see this line these lines denote that we're looking through the camera but we're not actually seeing what the camera's seeing because we're still in perspective view. Now, before we actually do anything else, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our properties uh, parameters tab and we go to headlamp and we're going to turn it off. There's never a good reason to use a camera headlamp because it makes your images look tacky and awful and oh, just don't never have your headlamps turned on. If you globally want to turn off your headlamps, let's go to general. And as you can see, auto headlamp never. That will mean that if you forget to change this parameter, it will still be off. So we've got our camera in position. Now we want to do is I want to align it. I want to make sure that it's bang on zero on the X and bang on zero on. So I'm going to go to my camera view now and you can see what's happened there. So now we are, if I come out of NVIDIA mode, if I go to texture shade as you can see I am smack bang down the center line of the scene looking straight at the object so if we were to move the X translate that's going to move us left and right along the X axis funnily enough if I were to move us along the Z axis we get closer and further away that's forward and backwards and then Y translate is up and down in contrast X rotate is up and down and the reason for that is that we're rotating along the x-axis rather than across it if that makes any sense so y rotate is actually our left and right changes so I'm going to keep that to zero because I want to be looking arrow straight down the center of the scene and then z rotate is the camera's tilt which I'm also going to set to zero like so so that's that so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our camera settings itself and we're going to look at what we've got. We've got perspective on. If we turn that off, that would give us a perfectly flat, uh, kind of like a plan view if you were looking at a blueprint. You're never going to need to do that, so just leave that on. Frame width is effectively, for want of a better way of putting it, frame width and focal length are essentially the same thing. They just work in opposite. Focal length is what photographers will be more familiar with because that's what we use in terms of our, when we buy a lens, we buy a lens for a focal length. So generally speaking, from a portrait photographer, you're going to be looking at between 85 and 105 focal length, which stops the shapes in the, um, in the viewport being distorted. If you have too wide an angle, if I was to go down to like 14 mil, you can see that things are starting to look a bit stretched and a bit warped. We are n we are still only a couple of feet away from that object, but all of this is now visible, which means that if there was a person standing right in front of the camera, their head and legs are going to be stretched and it's going to look ridiculous. So keep your focal lengths in mind and really no reason to change your frame width, to be honest. Now, depth of field, we're going to always have that on unless there's very rarely a good reason to not have your focal your depth of field on because real cameras use depth of field dependent on your um, aperture now in order to be able to see what's going to happen here we firstly we're going to come out into perspective view and we're going to rotate 90 degrees the focal distance is where the camera is actually focused to so if you look at a camera you'll see that it has the focus is always marked in distance normally in feet and meters well that's what this slider does it changes where the camera is focused to so the center of these two lines is the focal point and the f-stop is the aperture of your camera lens so for example if you want a really shallow depth of field you'd go to let's say 2.8 which is 
a very very shallow depth of field which means that we're focusing on the center of the cube which means the front and the back are going to be very blurred which is useful in some cases but generally speaking you're going to be focusing on closer to the front edge so let's bring the focal distance back to kind of there that's really where we're going to be looking to focus on so let's go back into our camera and we're going to change the view modes back to nvidia ira and as you can see now the edge is slightly blurred because it's not within the focal distance so that's what we call bokeh it's a french word i know some people call it bokeh and some people call it bokeh there's an innumerable ways of saying it but the correct pronunciation is bokeh and that is the quality of the blur in the areas that are out of focus now one way that we can see this a bit more effectively i'm going to come back into texture shaded and i'm going to come back out into perspective view now here's a tip for you when you're editing when you're making changes to your image that are not related to lighting always come out of nvidia iray mode and go into texture shaded mode because things run nice and smoothly whereas if we do this in nvidia iray mode it's not too bad at the moment because I've only got one sphere in it. But as you can imagine, when the game's trying to, when the engine is trying to render multiple things, that's going to cause a lot of slowdown and a lot of frustration. And believe me, it is incredibly frustrating trying to edit a scene when it's, you know, you can have a cup of tea while it's having to think about what it wants to do next. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another sphere and we're going to keep it in the world center we're going to keep all of the dimensions the same because we're going to move it manually so we're going to click on our sphere in the scene tab and all we're going to do is we're going to move it across slightly and then we're going to move it back in fact we're going to move it across a little bit more so that it's still in the frame like so i think we'll move it a bit further back and a bit further across there we go so now we'll jump back into our camera and we'll check that's probably that's fine. So what we'll do now is we'll go back into NVIDIA IRA mode. And as you can see, because it's further away, the bokeh, the blur is a lot bigger. It's a lot much more, a lot more blurred, which is how we create that cool effect in portraits. We focus on the object in front. We give ourselves a nice shallow depth of field and we end up with this really nice, cool, blurry effect in the background, which is awesome so that's essentially the really 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 basics the fundamentals of using das studio we're going to go over more in our next video but for now i hope you found that useful i look forward to seeing some of your images and i'll see you in the next video by all means give me a like and subscribe and i'll see you very soon thank you very much goodbye